Hello, everybody, again. This is Pastor Martin Phelps. Thank you so much for being a part of our ministry. Really appreciate it. Um, just to ask you to say to you that if you'd like to help us financially at all, we'd really appreciate it. all the details on the videos of how to give. And that really helps us a lot. So thank you so much. No matter what you give, we really appreciate it. And thank you for that. And if we don't have a chance to ever thank you, if you give, and we don't know you, <clears throat> we don't know your details, we just want to say thank you so much. It really helps us to pay for the expenses. Secondly, just to say to you, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps on YouTube if we like and we share and we subscribe. And that helps us spread God's word. And like I said before, we're spreading it for free. And we're being a blessing to the, to the, to the kingdom of God. And it's not costing anybody. They haven't got to join our ministry. They haven't got to do anything. They can see anybody in the world can see any message that I ever preach free of charge because that's what the gospel is. If people want to give, that's one thing. But we don't in any way. I want to help touch the world. And I want to be a blessing. Just be a part of what working with other ministries around the world to touch the world we live in. And uh, uh, to touch anywhere, any country you're in and so on. So I just want to say to you, thank you so much for that. And then just to say to you tonight, I'm, preach, I'm speaking on the armor of God, on the armor of God. This is part two. I might have to go into part three. I don't know, but I don't want to put, uh, you know, I don't, want, I don't teach for too, too long on the YouTubes right now. It's just I'd rather just do bite sizes so that you can send this to your friends and so on. And uh, we can be a blessing to the kingdom of God. And I just thank God for anybody out there that doesn't live in the United Kingdom, because at the moment I'm speaking from the United Kingdom. But I just want to say thank you to any, anybody in the world that's watching us. Um, maybe if you just get a chance, we'd really appreciate it if you're in another country outside the UK. Just um, send us an email just to tell us who you are and just tell us where you're watching from and um, et cetera, et cetera. It really would be a blessing to us. But just to say to you, if you in the armor of God is a subject that is preached on often, but it's just such an important subject and... Although it's preached on often, we really need to just understand what the armor of God is all about. And so uh, Ephesians 6, that's what I'm going through mainly tonight. I went through it part one. So I'll just quickly go through the verses I went through last, last week. Um, and it says here, verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. So the Apostle Paul's talking to the church at Ephesus and he's saying, finally, this is a very important thing I'm going to say, this is finally, be strong in the Lord. All of us want to be strong in the Lord because when we're strong in the Lord, we're strong in our own lives, we're strong to help others and we're strong against the ways of the devil and in the power of his might. We want to be strong in the power of God's might. We want to be very strong in the power of God's might. Verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God. So we want to learn what is the armor of God? What is the armor? It's obviously an armor to protect us. Uh, and, and it's also an armor to, to, to be able to defeat our enemies. But we need to put on an armor. There is an armor to put on. We are in a war. Uh, it, it, we've been, Satan's already lost the battle 2,000 years ago. But we have to enforce his defeat because he's the God of the world we live in. And so he tries to take control of this world illegally. And so whilst we're on this earth, and when we get to heaven, it'll be totally different, obviously. But whilst we're on this earth, we have to know how to stand against the way that Satan operates. And Satan is out there to deal, um, as, as the Apostle Paul said in verse 10, my brethren, which is his brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in the Lord. So he's talking about Christians. And Satan is out there to steal, kill and destroy from Christians any way he can, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, through people, through circumstances, to distract them, to take them out uh, in any way he can however severely he can, to disappoint them, to upset them, to bring depression, anything that will disable them. He's desperately wanting to turn the electrical power off in your life. So he, you can't stop you being saved. You're going to heaven, but he wants to stop you being a blessing for the kingdom of God. He wants to stop you being a soldier for, the, for, for Christ, a disciple of Christ, that you can go out and enforce his defeat and get other people to become believers and other people to know what you know. And so that's extremely important. He'll do it with ministers. He'll try and take them off track. Uh, ladies, whoever, men, anybody, he'll try and take people off track so that they're disabled. However way he does it, he tries to do it. So we need to put on the whole armor of God, not some of it. So like I said, listen to part one last week, part two this week, and then maybe part three next week. 
but put on the whole armor of God that you may, may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Satan, the wiles of the devil. I read from the King James because I know that it's got some old language in and I explain that language, but it's the most specific and exact by translation that there is and it explains things in a way that some of the other translations don't. I'm not criticizing them, um, but for me personally, most of my teaching is out of the King James because it's it's so good the way that that, God, that, that, that it's written and interpreted from the original Hebrew and Greek. But it goes on to say here, verse 11, that you may be able to stand against uh, uh, the wiles of the devil. So God's given us a way to stand against the devil. We will not allow the devil to defeat us. He's not going to defeat us, but we need to know how to stand against him. And, um, you know, I've, I've done a lot of this teaching lately from different aspects, different sides of the mountain, so to speak, you know. Uh, it's the same mountain, but you go up either different sides and there's different views of the mountain. Same as the Word of God. God, You could come from different aspects of the Word of God and still arrive at the top of the same mountain. So I'm trying to teach you in, in God's wholeness and God's fullness as the Holy Spirit leads me so that you can become so strong that never ever again in your life can, you allow, can Satan allow you or can, can Satan uh, uh, um, manipulate you to put a foot wrong for God. I'm not saying he's not going to try and attack you and come against you in situations you're going to have to face, but the armor of God will protect you and enforce Satan's defeat every single time. So it says that you may be able to stand. So if you don't have the armor of God on, you're not going to be able to stand. It says, it says put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the ways of the devil. If you don't put on the armor of God, then you won't. And this is not a physical armor. People think it's a physical armor. It's got nothing to do with the physical. It's a spiritual armor. You can't see it, but it's there. Same as like I said last week, you can't see a bomb that's falling from the sky because it's falling too fast or a bullet going out of a gun, but it's there. It's there and it's going to hit you and it's going to destroy you. Better get better know that it's, if, it, if it's aimed towards you, you're not going to be on this earth for much longer. And so the armor of God, Satan, is, it's a spiritual thing. And Satan's trying to come against you in the spiritual realm. But when we deal with it and we understand natural principles, we can operate in the spirit realm because everything operates in the spirit realm and we can get strong in our spirit man and then manifest God's word through our natural man and deal with every situation as the spirit of God on the inside leads us to do and as the word of God leads us to do. So that's what I'm trying to help you with today. So it says that you may be able to stand against the ways of the devil. And then it says, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're not... Flesh and blood is a natural realm. We're not wrestling. It's not like a natural wrestler. We're not wrestling against natural things. We're not wrestling against our boss that upsets us. We're not wrestling against our mother or father or our child or our cousin or, or the person at church that upset us or, 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 the, or, or the bank or, or um, the doctor that we think gave us sickness and disease because he's, he's upset us and he, you know, he's, not, he's not doing his job properly. Or, or, or the person on the road that we, that, that we get upset with when we're driving or, or, or any, any situation that we're in um, or, 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 or not just people but situations we're not wrestling with the mind so, so to speak uh, of course the mind will uh, I'm not saying that things won't try and come against the mind but if we deal with the spirit realm and we deal with the mind from the spiritual perspective then the mind will be strong and the mind will be submitted to the spirit and the mind will not uh, take you into a place of severe depression, upset, hurt, and 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 uh, destruction into a place where where you're disabled. And so we're not. It's not. It's not a natural dealing. We deal with the spirit realm. Like for instance, when we're sick, we're sick in the natural. But we can, if we deal with things in the spirit realm, and 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 get ourselves healed, ourselves healed in the spirit realm, then it'll manifest in the natural realm. We can't see it when we pray and we deal with things and we deal with sickness. We're not, we can't see what's actually happening. But in the spirit realm, God's dealing with it on our behalf. Satan's taking his hands off it and then God's able to manifest that healing in our body, etc., etc. Or finances, whatever it might be, etc., etc., etc. So it says, but we're, what are we wrestling against? Principalities, powers, these are all demonic forces. There's different levels of demonic forces. And we're wrestling against these demonic forces. So we're wrestling from the spirit realm. We're not wrestling and fighting, so to speak, but we're wrestling against these demons and evil spirits that would try to hinder the word of God going forth in our lives and in the world today. Principalities, which, is, uh, 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 which, which are uh, principled spirits 
Uh, remember the Bible talks about the principalities of Grisha and pr uh, uh, principalities of, 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 of that were over Israel, principalities that over certain parts of the world. It's evil spirits that were trying to bring evil to that world. Many times they have their own sort of personalities. So in different parts of the world, you find different types of evil. But I haven't got time to go into that right now. But um, the, we don't want them to bring evil to us or to those around about us. Against powers, that's powers of powers, that Satan, satanic demons with certain powers um, that, are, that, that have another level. Those principalities are higher level than powers. But, and then against the rulers of darkness, they, they, these are the ones who rule Satan's kingdom under Satan. You know, in any um, great dictator, you get henchmen around that dictator and those henchmen do his dirty work for him. And the henchmen that are right around the dictator and they control all the other evil uh, are the rulers of the darkness. They rule the dark kingdom. The darkness is Satan's kingdom. Satan operates in darkness. Jesus operates in light. But the, nevertheless, the darkness is still really real and the darkness is out there like darkness is dark. It's, it's out there to bring darkness and hopelessness and uselessness and futility and hostility to our lives and upset our lives, distract our lives and, and, and bring a hopelessness. That's the word I'm looking for. Bring a hopelessness to our life. So there's no hope anymore. There's no hope anymore. And uh, just, just while I'm carrying on with that, I just feel God telling me to tell you that uh, your pe as people out there keep on saying, hopefully God will do this, maybe God will do that. I want you to start saying now, God will do this. God will do that. God is going to do that. I know, a, <clears throat> I know a man that was praying for someone that had polio of the spine. The whole spine was bent over and he was a mighty man of God and he was used of God. And when the man came up, he said to him, see if you can stand. See if you can stand. He didn't even think about it. And the man couldn't. If you, see if you can stand up right. He prayed for his polio, etc., etc. He had curvature of the spine. See if you can stand up straight. And kept on saying it. And then the man couldn't. And he really felt God wanted to heal this man. And, and the man what really believed. And the man went back to his seat, uh, bending his spine over. And, and the man's, and, and he kept on saying, see if you can stand up. See if you can stand up. See if you can stand up. And uh, okay, see if you can stand straight. And then Jesus, when the man went back to his seat, Jesus appeared to this man of God and said to him, don't say, say if you can, see if you can. Just said, say, stand up straight, stand up straight. Act as if it's happened. Stand up straight. Act, as, act in my will. Don't keep on saying if, maybe, hope, whatever. Uh, 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 you know, if you keep on saying these words, like maybe God will do this, um, maybe God won't. Hopefully he will come in one day. Hopefully I'll get better. Hopefully this I, I might, he might heal me, he might, he might, he might do this, he might bring my finances in, whatever. Start saying, he will, he will. Don't just believe he's able, believe he's willing. I believe I'm, gonna, I'm telling some people out there right now, uh, very, very strongly to so, start changing your confession to saying he will do it, even though he hasn't done it yet. It doesn't matter what you feel like. Remember the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord and, and trust Him with everything you've got, every fiber of your being. Lean not to your own understanding. Don't lean to your mind. Your mind will lie and try and tell you to just put it softly on God, just to place a soft demand on God. Place a whole demand on God and say, God, you will do that. Once you know it's His will, once you know it's in His word, get strong and say, God, you're not going to maybe see, see if this might happen. Um, um, hopefully this happens. Uh, if, if it does, I'll be really happy to say it's going to. Say, I'm going to see a change. I'm going to see a manifestation of my healing. I'm going to see a change in my finances. I'm going, because it's going to happen. Because the minute I prayed, God has done it for me. And I don't care what I've seen or what I haven't seen. I don't care how dark it feels to me. I'm going to see a change. I'm not trusting my mind. I'm trusting my spirit. I'm trusting God, my God's word. His word will work for me. It won't maybe work for me. His word will work for me. His word is going to work for me right now. His word's going to work for me tomorrow. His word's going to work for me the next day. I don't care that I've only got, uh, that I'm in overdraft in the bank and I've got no money. Money will come into my bank. My money will, my, my bank will have money because it's not coming from the natural. God will make sure of it. God will make sure man will give under my bosom. And I'm just going to stop there just a second. Um, I'm just going to stop there a second. I'm just going to go here to, I'm just going off a little bit, but I just want to help you here. I, 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 I want you to start quoting Luke 6, 38. Let's just quickly go there. 
if you wouldn't mind going to Luke 6.38, Luke 6.38, Luke 6.38, it says, Give, give, and it shall be given unto you. Give, and it shall be given unto you. So, when you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give unto my bosom, give unto your bosom. This is what I'm trying to say to some people out there. You've given finances, you've been a blessing, you've been so kind, but you keep on moaning and groaning that you've got nothing. You keep on moaning and groaning that you're, you're, you're in um, a deficit in your finances, that you've got so much expense to pay, to pay off. That you, it doesn't matter how big you, the, the expenses are. You just keep on being a blessing and giving. Uh, as the Bible says, just keep on paying your tithes and offerings, being a blessing. doesn't matter how tight it's been. Just keep on doing it. And don't worry about the situation. And don't say, God, what am I going to do? I'm gonna, and scream and shouting to God and saying, God, I can't, I don't know, what, what am I going to do? You, you seem to have let me down. You're not helping me, Lord. Oh, please, God, please, God, please, God. I, I desperately need to pay up my debts. I'm get, my overdraft is increasing every single month. My credit card's increasing every month. The cost of living is so bad. Start to quote Luke 6.38. I just feel there's many people out there. I'm going to help you today. This is by the Spirit of God. This is coming hot off the press. This is not even part of my sermon. I'll carry on with part three next week again. But this is important for you today. And so I want to go with the Holy Ghost because He knows who's going to be watching me out there. I'm pre I prepare my sermons for the people watching me out there. I don't prepare them so that I can prepare the best sermon so that everybody can tell me what a great sermon I preached. If I'm not helping you, then it makes no difference. But this is what I feel God's saying to me to, to tell you. Start saying to God, it's going to be given to me. Start saying with your mouth, it's going to be given to me. I don't care how bad your finances are. Start to say, God, it's going to, uh, finances are going to be given unto me. Finances are going to be given unto me. Good measure, good measure. That's a lot of finances. Pressed down. In other words, a lot. Re what God's trying to say is he's liking it to pressing down the money. It's going to be a lot of money, praise God. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together. In other words, really tight with, uh, to contain the money. In other words, the money is going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot to contain. I'm going to get money that's going to be a lot to contain. Shaken together and running over and running over. There's going to be so much. It's going to be running over. It's going to be running over. Shall men and women give unto my bosom? Which men and women? I don't know. Is it going to be my company? I don't know. Don't you bother about that. You bother about God. He's going to do it his way. But I want you to start saying, men and women will give unto my bosom. I command men and women to give unto my bosom. The Bible says concerning the work of his hands, command him. So I, I, I start to say right now, men, money is loosed to me. It's loosed in Jesus' name. Whatever is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. Therefore, Father God, I command in Jesus' name, finances to be loosed to me. I command you, your angels, to go forth and fetch in the money, money to me from men's bosom and women's bosoms because they are going to give unto me. Fetch in the money I need. Start to, you know, obviously you pray for the amount of money you need and then beyond that, just say, Lord, I'm going to make this limitless because your kingdom is limitless. You're, you're, you, you, you give out of your riches in glory, which are limitless. But I, this is what I need right now, but I think you're going to give me much more than that. And thank you, Father God, for commanding men to give unto my bosom. And I command angels to go forth right now and command men and women to give unto my bosom. And I command the money to be loose from men and women. And money come to my door right now and come into my house and you come to me via God by the ways of God. Which men and women are going to give to you? I don't know. You mustn't know or mustn't even concern yourself. But start to speak it out. Start to stop complaining about it. Stop murmuring about it. And start to say it. Shall. You can, if you murmur once about it, you're going to stop the blessings of God. Stop murmuring and moaning. Stop talking to friends about it. Just get on with it and start believing God. And I believe your whole finances are going to turn around. God bless you. I know I changed it, but I'm going to uh, uh, carry it on with something different. But next week... I'm going to continue talking on the armor of God, part three. Have a great week. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you want to bless us financially, we appreciate it. But uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for listening. I really enjoyed preaching today. I believe the anointing of God is on me, and I believe it's going to touch your life. And in Jesus' name, I pray you get set free in every area of your life today, and you start to grow in the things of God. God bless you, and I pray Christ be formed in you, and you become stronger than you've ever been before. In Jesus' name, amen.